In case you didn't watch our last video, this is an old cinder block building we just bought in the Bywater neighborhood in New Orleans. It had a wood-framed flat roof that was collapsing thanks to the diligent work of some local termites. So I chopped off the top of the building and removed everything down to the four walls and the slab. The plan is to add about six feet of height to the interior space and create a pitched roof using a system of steel trusses, wood framing, and sips, or structural insulation panels. The design we came up with calls for four unique trusses, custom fabricated with roughly 6,000 pounds of steel. This presents a unique set of challenges for us for a few reasons, one being that we rarely fabricate anything in our studio bigger than a coffee table, so just handling anything at this scale is kind of intimidating. Beyond that, there's just a lot of weird geometry happening here. We're trying to retrofit a pitched roof onto a non-rectangular building, so each truss is different and all the walls end up with different heights and angles. So we've been slowly working our way through this stack of steel, cutting out all the pieces of our trusses. And as we go, we bring them up here and paint them. This isn't necessarily the final color, but just something to keep them from rusting. Every piece we cut, we catalog, and we have a number that tells us exactly which truss it's a part of and where it goes in that truss. Once we're done with a set of these, we bring them out to the building and stage them on the ground. And we're almost through the stack. When we're done, we're gonna start fabricating trusses. This is the first and smallest truss, weighing in at a little over 800 pounds. Just to be able to move these things around while we're working, we had to build this lift with a chainfall hoist and some scaffolding casters. It's a pretty crude contraption, but it helped us move material around and get everything positioned until we could rent some heavy equipment for the actual barn raising. So we've got one truss completed and staged off here to the side next to the wall. And we've got our form out and we're laying out our second truss. After we finish laying out all the angle iron that goes in this orientation, then there's going to be the tubing that makes up the webbing of the truss, these pieces right here. And then there's another layer of angle iron that goes in the opposite orientation. And we'll get that all welded up and then staged next to the wall. And we'll have to get some heavy equipment out here to pick these up and put them where they go. Well, we've got all the trusses up now and we have fabricated these X braces to go between the trusses. We've got these columns here. These are temporary columns, which will eventually be replaced by some steel columns. But before we get to that, we're gonna have to cut out the concrete. We're gonna cut a big square here and then pour a massive concrete footing beneath the slab. In the meantime, we're working on framing so you can see we've begun framing in these wall sections here. We've got to get all of these done in the next few weeks so that we're ready when the roof panels arrive. Well, the sips finally arrived after about 20 weeks. I had no idea how we were going to get these things onto the roof, but the first step is just to get organized. The panels came CNC cut and manufactured exactly to the plans I provided, so each one is labeled for a specific position on the roof. If I modeled everything correctly, and I'm not entirely confident that I did, they should fit together like a big puzzle, and we shouldn't have to cut anything. 
I was giving that about a 20% chance. 60% we have to cut a bunch of stuff and 20% it's so screwed up we have to get more panels made. We decided to start at the ridge line, square everything up, and then work our way down to the eaves. These first few pieces are small enough we could just carry them up a ladder, so that was no problem, but we struggled to come up with a plan for the next part. Most of the panels are about 4 feet by 9 feet and weigh about 100 pounds. There's over 50 of them, so we definitely needed a plan, but we're working on a shoestring budget, so I couldn't afford to do what most contractors would do and just rent some kind of lift or crane for a few days. Eventually, we came up with a plan to try this sheetrock lift from Northern Tools that can go up to 16 feet. It's rated for 150 pounds, but it feels pretty janky with 100 on it, and I'm pretty sure we were pushing the limits of what it can handle. But once we figured out our workflow, it actually wasn't too bad, and things started moving along pretty smoothly. At this point we've laid out our first run of panels on the roof and now that we're down to the eave we can see we're sticking out a little farther than we we're supposed to. So we're going to have to back up a little bit and do some cutting to try to get back on track. Don't record me doing something so fucking ham fisted. Chew it. Use your teeth. Nice and flush. Looking good. Well, we successfully got all the panels up and no one died, so that feels like an accomplishment. Now we've just got to shoot a few thousand fasteners into the roof to hold it all together. Then I guess it's roofing felt and metal panels. There's a lot more to do, but it's starting to look like we might actually finish this job someday. Not bad for a couple of amateurs.